Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Blake Seffner, and um, we'll be talking about uh, one long topic and one surprisingly short topic. Uh, the longer topic is how to create a custom import export module for Ubercart, and the shorter topic is how to create a custom digital download store. Okay. Uh, at first, this was going to be two different sessions, but as I began to dig into it, I realized that the custom import export is a ton of information, and creating custom digital downloads is actually surprisingly little information. So uh, I'll jump into it because it's a lot of information. Okay, so in general, why would you want to write your own custom import export? Uh, what are the requirements and key things that you'll need to be able to do this? I'll go over bulk import of downloadable product files. Uh, these are the files that the customers receive. And then uh, bulk import of files referenced by your product nodes. Those could be images or uh, other digital assets that are embedded within the body. And then uh, bulk export of all products of a given class. I've separated the exporting logic to be on a class-by-class -class basis because it enables uh, product class specific logic to be embedded in there and uh, when I first attempted to do this uh, import-export work I was looking to create some sort of generic solution because uh, I was thinking that this would be useful as a um, module that could be given back to um, the whole community but as I began to dig into it, already Ubercard is complicated, and then creating your own import-export is fairly complicated. But then to make it generic so that other people could have whatever product configurations they wanted was creating something that made the views interface uh, look elementary. And so rather than wanting to give my life up to tech support of people unable to figure it out, I'm doing things like this, you know, to explain to everybody how to actually create their own. And then also uh, bulk import and update of, uh, of your given products. And this is the real value here because nowhere have I been able to find the documentation for how do you create and um, manipulate in an automated manner products with multiple SKUs per product. Um, multiple options with different prices per products uh, and you know just all these other more sophisticated things that you want to do with a store okay and then I'll also be touching upon uh, some little tips about how do you get Excel to be friendly okay so uh, in general why you want to do this why you want to create a custom import export uh, basically, import-export modules are not really configured with Ubercard in mind. Um, they don't really handle uh, images and digital assets that are linked within your content body, and most of them don't even handle if you have an asset that is attached to your node. Um, they don't address products and the things that you have in products like attributes and options and custom SKUs, custom prices and of course not digital download features and so um, that basically puts all the existing import export solutions really just outside of the usefulness of any type of Ubercart based online store and there's some taxonomy handling by some of the import export but unless it's part of a complete solution then you know it's not really useful because uh, essentially when you import and export your taxonomy you want it to be integrated into your product flow and if it's not if your import export solution doesn't know about products it's not going to help very much uh, and then this all came about after creating a couple stores for some clients and realizing fairly quickly that with even as little as a dozen products I uh, just manual maintenance of the site just isn't really feasible and I've been really surprised by it, it, it in my opinion Ubercart isn't really finished if there's no import export circular system then you have to manually do all this and I know a number of 
fairly well-known online stores using Ubercart who have around 60 people either on staff or, or inside Amazon Turk that are just manually updating the store for the different product seasons. And that's, you know, for any small store or any larger type of organization that's serious about, you know, it's their full-time operation, they're a store, uh, that's not really a solution. You can't really, that, you know, doing it by hand really is not feasible. And then also, of course, stores, they have sales, they have seasons, they have frequent design facelifts that keep traffic flowing. And so you really need to have something that allows the store owners to rinse and repeat in a continual cycle. And, um, you know, like I mentioned before, this is already complex enough and any generic solution just makes it even more so. So in general, in order to do this, of course, you need to have Drupal and Ubercart installed, ready for products. And this is probably one of the most important aspects is you really need to plan out your products carefully, meaning you want to have a SKU naming system such that you've got a default SKU and then any of your options, they will also be represented in a custom SKU and those you're able to, given a specific SKU, meaning here's this SKU and then its name can be broken up to tell you which options were in that one, okay? You need to be able to do this because in your logic, as you're moving things, importing, exporting modules, you're going to be using the SKU as your key to tell where to fork your logic into different directions. And I'll walk you through that also. Um, this becomes its own separate module. And the real important aspects, you know, it really shouldn't be your first Drupal module because it's, you know, fairly uh, not complex PHP, but it's fairly involved as far as you're going to have to be able to hold the problem in your head and walk yourself through it. And if you're, you know, not uh, a developer by nature, it could be over your head. And um, also something that I really like, I think it's probably one of the most phenomenal modules for Drupal is the whole services module. And I like services for things like this import export because then I can just purely focus on creating the function calls that are my import export logic. And then if I make those function calls exposed through services, then through the services function browser, I am able to call this logic without having to create a user interface. And, you know, it's because then what you essentially have is, uh, here's your list of different functions that have been installed into services. You just click the function name, enter the parameters and call it. You know, so it's very developer friendly. Uh, and, uh, and I would expect that once you're at, you know, the final stages of your import-export is all nice and pretty as far as the logic, then it's very simple just to create a user interface for your final client usage. And um, also one thing nice about services is that it enables you to do your site updates remotely because services also uh, basically takes your import export module and converts it into a web API. So that's a nice little side benefit. And then also I'll be touching a little bit about uh, upon some of the different um, Excel um, idiosyncrasies that if you don't work with Excel a lot, um, it'll just trip you up for you know a couple hours and I'll just save you that time. Okay, so your basic setup, each product class, you want to know how many images are going to be available for each product. And each product in a class, if you're, if you're unfamiliar with what a product class is, it's essentially a content type for a given product. Uh, so you could have a content type or a product class. They're basically interchangeable, those two terms. Uh, 
you know, I've got one for which we'll be using as the example. It's a high dynamic range imagery. So uh, that product class is HDR. And um, so you want to have mapped out exactly how you want to represent every one of the products of that class. Um, and you'll probably, at least I do, I create a page template for each of my different product classes so I have more control over how the product is going to um, be displayed. Uh, you're within your product, you're going to have your product description, which is going to be full of HTML and other things that, you know, are the nice little attractive um, ad copy type things for what the, what the actual product is. And then I mentioned before, your, your SKU needs to be able to contain embedded information that you then take apart and parse to fork what your logic is doing. Uh, you may have one or more attribute sets for your given products where the attribute sets are, you know, like medium, large, small, red, green, blue. Those would be two different attribute sets. And unfortunately, due to the, due to the design of Ubercart, if you're doing digital products, as in these are things that people will be able to download, you can only have one attribute set on those products. Multiple attribute sets do not work for digital download products. And I'll explain that a little bit more when we get to the actual logic of where that falls apart. And then, of course, for any given attribute set, you can have an unlimited number of options, where an attribute is really just a collection of options. Okay, So in the case of you wanted to have a digital download product that had multiple attribute sets, what you end up having to do is have one attribute and then your options have to contain the combinations of all of the multiple attribute sets that you would have had. And then I already mentioned the SKU uh, has in it the encoding of what your product options would be. And then, of course, you would have a unique digital download for each product option. That's the actual download product. And then I've mentioned here multiple attribute sets, not really possible. Come on, next. Okay, so now what I'm doing in these slides, I don't expect you to be able to, like, you know, read and, you know, follow this code. I'll be walking through the code, explaining some of the, the key portions. But in general, you can go to my session um, overview, and you can download this. And you can also go to my uh, missinguberkartmanual.com site and also download this same um, PowerPoint. And literally, you can cut and paste this code, and it will work. Okay, you'll of course need to, you know, where I say CG store download, you'll of course want to change to whatever your actual module name, you know, your module underscore download, and so on. And it should be fairly obvious the places that you want to change, but in general, this is working code that I've just removed um, my debug statements and, you know, places where I had different proprietary information. But okay, so this routine right here is a very useful routine in that the output variable is essentially anything. It can be a PHP uh, large concatenated string. What I pass to it is um, an entire CSV file that can be multiple megabytes. Uh, you pass it the file name and this will pop to the user on their browser a download dialog and this will just, you know, pass that to them. So this is the routine that I use to pass the exported CSV file to the user. Okay, this is, uh, I have a continual issue with trying to get any type of real debugging capability in my, in my Drupal environment, so I have this simple routine here where if I'm on my local host, I just do this um, error log. If I'm on my live site, I uncomment, uh, put file contents, comment out error log, and then it goes to this path, 
and is just uh, a simple way to echo things out separate from watchdogs, separate from everything else. So I'm able to, uh, you know, it's just a simple way to do printfs, really. Okay, here's a nice routine that I really do not understand is not inside the Drupal API. This given a parent term will return to you a string containing, or it returns to you an array, I believe, yeah, of all of the taxonomy terms owned by a given term. Uh, basic something that really should be available in the API. It's not. Here, you can use this one. Okay, uh, this routine will read a Excel export CSV file into a local variable and return that back to you. Uh, it's based upon the PHP standard function fget CSV. And um, one thing that you really need to make sure if you're on a Macintosh and you're using Excel, when you save it, make sure that you save it as um, Windows format CSV. Uh, otherwise, this fget CSV won't find the line endings and uh, you won't be able to parse your file. And uh, this thing's just very straightforward. Uh, the format of your CSV file, which I'll get to in a, in a minute, this basically reads the headers and then enforces that every row following the headers has the same number of elements. So it's just really simple debugging at that level. Okay, now we're going to get into bulk import of download product files. This is the bulk import of the products that the consumers are going to purchase. Uh, in the site that I'm um, um, developing this for, we've got so far a little shy of 1,900 digital products. And uh, if you were having to deal with modifications and changes to that by hand, uh, you'd never get your store open. So uh, that was really the big reason why I began to work on this. Uh, some of the key information that you really need to know is UC Files table holds all downloadable product files. And that table auto-populates when anybody, when the administrator, the only person who has, who, has, who has actual permission, visits the page admin store products files. It's kind of odd in that you have to actually fill, okay, your digital download files, they live outside of the um, doc root. So above doc root is where you'll store all your hundreds of megabytes. In our case, we have like five gigs of digital download files. And then you tell Ubercart where this directory is. And then when you visit this link, it's going to examine everything under that link or under that directory and add it to be under control of the system. Since that is already pretty automated, I figured there was no reason to need to add into the import-export whatever handshake bit twiddling takes place at when you visit this page. So in this bulk import, it's going to upload everything, and I'll walk you through exactly what that takes, and then, it, and then you just visit this page. Okay, then you also need the UC product features table, which is the generic holder of any product features. And uh, if you're unfamiliar, features are a product feature. There's only two right now. There's uh, role assignment and file assignment. And we'll only be talking about file assignment. Role assignment is a little more complicated, and it seems to be a little more in flux. So um, I've done work with that and been frustrated to want to put it off for the time being. Um, and also very key, the UC file products table, it's the link between the UC files and UC product features. So the features tells the product that it has a download feature. The files is the table that contains the list of all of the files that are available as download stores to the download store, and then this UC product features table is the link between the two. 
and uh, before you run this bulk import you need to make sure that the products that you want to receive these um, downloadable files have already had their attribute and options structured to receive these files otherwise when the logic tries to attach the file to the product there'll be no option for it to find to do the attachment to kind of makes sense okay so this right here is fairly straightforward code that is the very beginning of the bulk import um, download product files okay so here we're just uh, you know getting all of the files inside the database and then we're going to loop through them and we grab onto the file name and the file ID we get the full path to the file and then if the file exists or it's some sort of directory or if the file exists and it's not an actual directory we get information about the file and then in the following slides is the, is the pseudocode necessary to import these, the, these puppies. Okay, inside the file exists logic, your file name of the product is essentially your product's specific SKU. So the file name of the product contains the product type, the model number, and an option identifier. So in, in, in my case, our product class is HDR, and then there's an underscore, and then the actual model number, which model this is, follows that. So that's like a four-digit number. And then an, there's another underscore, and then an option identifier follows that. And then as you're going through here, if you find a file that does not fit within your file naming system, then one of the people on your team just accidentally saved the wrong file inside your products directory and it's up to you. You can either delete it, pop a dialog or whatever, but in general just ignore those files. And so then also what's nice is from this file name you can derive the complete information about where this, pro where this file product is supposed to go. And so then from that, from your SKU right here, from your SKU right here, you should be able to just to select from UC products and this will find the actual product that is of that specific SKU or of that default SKU and then this would check to see if that file is already being managed by the site. So if the file is already be being managed by the site then we check to see if the file is different meaning uh, has the file name changed or is the path to that file different from the path stored in, in the database meaning that it's been updated and so you want to update the UC files table to reflect the new location new byte size and so on of that new update okay so if the product is found and it isn't managed by the site at this point this code right here is what creates the UC product features entry. So that's going to identify this file as a downloadable feature. And then also we need to have, an, also one thing that's interesting here is the FID field, you just specify file at this point and then Drupal write record is going to update that to be the actual FID that you're going to be using in the next call. Okay, so now in this previous slide, we just created the UC product features entry. Now we're creating the UC file products entry. So before we were saying this file is a product feature. Now we're saying this file is a file product. Okay, so it gets complicated. But in general, okay, so now we needed that PFID so now Drupal write record created it for us. That's one thing great about Drupal write record is if you don't specify everything, it gives you default values. And sometimes that's the only way to get values that you need for subsequent function calls. So here this is creating a object. We fill in the fields that we need and then uh, we just write it. 
Drupal write record, and that basically created our UC file products entry. And that's actually it. As far as doing bulk import of downloadable product files, it's a fairly short routine, and uh, this code right here, you can cut and paste, you know, change the things so that, you know, you don't have your um, product description saying that it's a, you know, blah, 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 pixel-wide HDR panorama. Where was the code available again? Um, if you go to my uh, slide uh, sessions, or if you go to my sessions overview, uh, there should be a link to it there. PowerPoint slides for session? Yep. Okay, okay so now shifting gears a little bit, now we're going to talk about bulk import of node files. These are the digital files that are being referenced by the node body, by the product body. So, you know, this is typically um, images that are showing the product, and if you have um, PDFs of um, extended product descriptions and, you know, readme's or whatever things that you want the customer to be able to download to see and, you know, learn more information about the product before they purchase, this is the bulk import of those. And the reason you want a bulk import of these is because other import systems, they'll import your body, but they won't follow the links and then import what's being pointed to by those links. So you need this. Okay, so in order to do this, there's a couple things that you need. This routine right here, this is going to read the entire current files table into um, a local variable and this enables you to essentially given a new file check to see if it's inside the existing table and then this here checks to see if a file already exists in the file table so using the previous function you loaded the entire file table into this files db and the previous function also told you what was the size of the files um, table. And then this is going to come back with the index that it found matching within this. And this will be the base file name of that match. And this is going to either return true or false. And you'll see how this is used in just a minute. Okay, now. I'm going to walk through this in pseudocode, but the importing of a directory of files logic is actually quite large. And uh, so just to give you a, a quick overview of it, uh, you'll have a routine that is essentially given a path to some files that you may have any type of complicated hierarchy underneath that source path you want it to go into a destination path and that destination path is under your files directory managed by Drupal. So it would be like sites default files. Uh, that would, you know, if you wanted to just put everything right at the root of sites default files, that's what your destination path would be. Uh, for, for my stuff, it's sites default files products and then there's a hierarchy underneath that. And as long as that hierarchy and source path matches, it'll put everything in the correct spot. Okay, so first you verify that the destination path exists, and if not, create it. And that's not quite as simple as it sounds, and I'll walk you through that in a moment. I get the files table with this routine, and then get all files in the path via this thing, which is, I think this is just great. I, I, one thing I love about PHP is the fact that there's routines like file scan directory. You give it a path and then some sort of wild card and it just returns to you all the files. I just like, in other previous programming careers, this was a lot of work and it's just great to have a single routine that does it. Uh, and then this routine uh, test files DB will check to see if the files already exists. If the files exists, we uh, we will create uh, an update to that file. If the file does not exist, we'll introduce it to Drupal for its for Drupal to maintain. 
Okay, so to verify that the destination path exists, uh, first you get the uh, path to the file directory, uh, that is where your site's default files or wherever you've got your files configured to be saved. This API call tells you what's the base to that. And you make sure that this First you try to create the path, and if, the, if it failed, then you tell it to create the directory, and this make directory is a um, recursive maker. So that will make sure that the directory is created, even if it's some long hierarchical string path, you know, you have a large path in there. Okay, so updating a file. Uh, this is when a file exists, it, and, okay, so if you have files being maintained by your website, and then you have a new directory that you want to import in, any file in that new directory is going to be an update to the ones that already exist, if they already exist. So this right here is going to, you've identified the fact that this is, a update to a file because the file existed in the files database table so now this is the necessary logic to be able to fill a file object and then you just say Drupal write record and if it returns saved new or saved updated then it worked and then at this point you can delete your previous file and of course you will want to add some other logic to make sure that when you updated it you did not update it in the same location that it was previously because then you don't want to then you don't want to delete what you just updated okay to insert a new file into the database it's pretty simple very similar to what we were doing before although we're not filling everything in um, and let's see here Okay, I get into that a little bit a little bit later, but uh, something that's kind of interesting is I noticed that I needed to have these two. Whoop, back up. I needed to have these two fields set, and I don't know what they are, but I know that you need to have them. Uh, just trial and error, looking at, at other modules that were importing files, and. Um, so this is what you need, and that'll save you some time. I have it to track that all down. And so you copy the file into Drupal site storage, and then uh, if the copy worked, then you do the Drupal write record, and Drupal write record is going to respect the fact that you didn't specify everything in the file object, and it will um, fill in the missing fields with the default values. Okay, now, okay, so that, that was everything necessary to be able to import files into your Drupal files maintenance. And before I jump into the next thing, is there, are there any questions at this point? Okay. And now, to export all the products of a, a given class, there's basically two steps required build a giant string containing the entire CSV file and then you call uh, the download function that's going to push that string to the user. And you need to be very careful as you're creating your CSV output to make sure that any fields containing multiple values are going to have quotes around them because commas are reserved characters inside the CSV format. So if you have like in the case of a product with multiple SKUs or a product with um, multiple options, uh, when those are specified in the CSV file, they're going to have commas inside the single cell. So you have to quote that to make sure that it gets exported as a single field. Okay, so, um, oh, and then also, uh, Excel, if you put HTML into an Excel cell, it will interpret that to mean that, oh, you want to display this HTML, 
and then as soon as it recognizes the HTML, then you can't edit the thing anymore uh, because it's suddenly turned into a display-only cell. Or I mean, I'm sure there's probably some way to get under the hood, but you know, I try to spend as little time as possible figuring out the idiosyncrasies of Microsoft products. Okay, so this here, this part right here where I'm defining output, that's what we're going to be outputting as our CSV file. And so it's going to be outputting the node ID, the type, title, SKU, and SKU could have multiple fields in it. The selling price could have multiple fields in it. Image could have multiple fields in it. Image title is going to be a string, so you want to definitely quote that. And image alt is could have multiple values in it. We want to quote that. Taxonomy will definitely have multiple values in it that'll need to be quoted. And then the body is going to have fairly extensive HTML created. And so you'll need to disguise that HTML, and I'll show you how I do that. And so in general, the way this function works is uh, you grab all the products of a given class, right here with this here, and then you loop through loading that product, and then in the following slides I'll show you the logic that is going to be exporting that. You've finished, and this is one row, so the output begins and then in this loop, I'm basically using the uh, dot star. Right I'm I, I, I'm using the uh, dot equals to concatenate all the continuing data into that same output variable. And then when I'm done, I just call uh, the download function, and that's going to push it out to the user. Come on, slide. Okay, so this is the logic to handle these first three fields, or first four fields. This is just the beginning of the SKU portion. It'll go on to more than one slide. But in, in general right here, okay, so now we have our output. We're looping over every product of this class. And so we're just going to add our node ID and then put a comma after it. Add our type, put a comma after it. And that's in general how you create a single field for your comma separated value output. And now when we're outputting our SKUs, it requires an evaluation of the product adjustments. Uh, product adjustments is the Ubercart terminology for a product that has multiple SKUs. And so what I'm doing is I put a SKU for each product option. And, uh, okay, so for my uh, each SKU option, it's, um, we've got three data fields, we've got the, okay, hang on a second. I'm sorry about that, I just kind of, incorrectly explain something. Um, when we create a option SKU, this is telling Ubercart that this SKU is going to have a custom, or this product is going to have a custom SKU on it. And the way you tell Ubercart this is it requires three fields. It requires the node ID of the product it has this combination, which is an array that contains the attribute ID and the option ID of what this product's specific option that's going to receive the custom SKU. And then there's the string that's going to be the custom SKU. So let's say our product is, you know, node 800, and this product is going to, it has five options, and so the attribute ID that contains all five options would be this first key here, and then for each of the individual options, it'll have an option ID of, you know, like 9, 10, 11, 12, something like that. So this tells it 
that for this node of using these attributes and this option, use this model number when somebody purchases it. And that model number can be any string you want, and in my case, it would be HDR under bar model number, like 1000, and then the name of the attribute option, which would be like um, resolution 512, something like that. Okay, so now here's the specific logic that given that information about the SKU, this is going to output the information containing that product's custom SKU. So what this thing is going to generate is you'll have inside a single cell, sorry about that, inside a single cell there will be the default SKU and then a comma followed by the class attribute ID associated with one specific product and then the option string equal to that specific product and then the option ID that that specific product should use when the customer purchases it and then this values three and four are going to repeat over and over again for every option available to that product and so this logic right here this is the reason why you can't have multiple attributes on digital download products uh, because the way that you associate a downloadable product with a or the way you associate a downloadable file with a specific product is through this association and if there's more than one attribute associated with the product there's no place in the logic for it to resolve which download file you're talking about. And, uh, you know, it's, um, so if you're not doing digital download products, you can have any number of different attribute sets that you want uh, because you're not dealing with that having to map to a specific file. But in the case of having to map to a specific file, uh, the logic just wasn't designed to handle it. So um, one thing that's a little bit interesting about this is this option combo. Um, it took me a long time to figure out what exactly that thing is. Uh, and um, it's essentially, I pointed it out here. Come on. It's this same combination thing. It's a serialized array containing which attribute option this model is going to use. And here's how you generate that. Okay, and then also, so this is the entire output necessary to handle either one SKU or a model that has multiple SKUs on it. And so you'll see up here when I begin creating the output, First, I just add a single quote, and then it's the product node's default model. And then here, I check to see, are there any, in this next DB query call, I check to see if there's any attributes that go with this node type. And if there are, then I uh, loop over them here. And so here I got the class attributes. Now I'm getting the product adjustments, and I loop over them and I specify those adjustments to every product. And this is just being output. And then down here at the very bottom of this routine, that's where I put my closing quote and my comma to close that cell's output. Come on. Surprise Excel is giving me some problems here. Okay. Now, here's how you handle the cell price. And this is going to output a default price and then a price adjustment for every option on that product. 
and then also the option ID. Now, the way that multiple prices are handled on a given product, the price adjustment is added. So you can have any number of different options, and these options will take the default price plus your um, attribute or plus your price adjustment. So any option is able to be greater than or less than cost-wise to what your default price is. So this right here is just going to begin the output by giving the default price with a little quote. And then we check to see if there's any product options on this product. And then if there are, we're going to loop over them, outputting the optional price and then the option ID associated with that price. And then we just close our quote. And now moving forward to our image handling. And then, you know, this is just the logic for a single image. But of course, you can easily create a loop. And I'm using image cache. So for me, it was fairly simple. It's just uh, the output. I just take the nodes field image cache file name and the title and the alt fields. And I um, add those to my output. And that's pretty much it to handle the, the export logic for your image. And um, one other thing that I noticed, which is kind of nice about this, if you're using the user interface in Drupal to specify your product uh, title and alt tags, uh, it's got a limit. It only allows you to do about, I think, 60 or 80 characters. Whereas if you're doing it in your own import logic, you can have as many as you want. And so that's nice from a search engine optimization standpoint that you can uh, fill your alt tag with a lot of useful information. And here's the beginning of creating the output for taxonomy. And the earlier function that I uh, show, uh, this one right here is part of the API part of the Drupal API, where you give in a node, it returns to you all of the terms. And then this here, given a product class, this returns to you an, an array of all of the products with all of the terms within that class. And then here, this handles the output for your taxonomy. And um, I've, and then notice here that I've got a double quote at the very, okay, here's what I'm doing. The field, because the taxonomy is a little bit complicated, because it could be a series of strings, any taxonomy term could have spaces in it. So every one of those is actually quoted internally. And so here, as I loop over my terms, each term is quoted, it gets added into the field, and then here the output is uh, the output is appended, and so what this receives is it receives a quoted series of terms with the spaces and everything intact within your taxonomy terms. And then for the body field, um, because Excel uses quotes within the CSV format, you can't have any quotes inside your body. But if your body is using HTML markup, you're going to have quotes in there. So I chose the caret character because that's not really used by HTML. So before I um, import into CSV, here I take my node body and I replace all quotes with a caret. And then I'm just simply, and, and then also, uh, in order to further mask the HTML, I convert all less than symbols to be the Atilda character. So then once those have been replaced, then I can just take my body and just append it to my output. And now that will be interpreted in Excel as just some strangely charactered large cell 
and it's not going to be uh, screwing up your CSV file format because there won't be any quotes in there, and it's not going to be interpreted as HTML because uh, there's no um, less than um, HTML tag markers. And that's pretty much it for bulk export of products of a given class. Uh, and when you're looking at these slides on your own, you'll, you'll notice up here at the top that I've marked out, you know, in bold blue, which field is being handled by each one of these slides. So you can literally just take this code and cut and paste it together, and it will run. Okay, and then bulk export of products of a given class. Okay, here, here's where I'm just um, repeating that first slide to kind of refresh you that all the logic in those previous slides I just walked through, they're going to fit right inside here. So you can just cut and paste this, and then those other previous slides, you just cut and paste into here in the, in the same order that I give, and it'll run. Okay, now bulk import of products of a, given, of a given class. This is the part where at this point your store staff has been working in Excel. They've created, you know, hundreds if not thousands of different products and they've got all the files and everything all set up and you want to be able to import this puppy. This is going to handle all of the database wrangling and bit twiggling necessary for Ubercart to recognize this. Okay, so in, in general, the overall process is you read the CSV file in, which is very simple with that routine that I gave you, and then you'll load the files table, and then you'll load all of your taxonomy, and then you'll just loop over every row in the CSV, uh, in the CSV import. If it's a new product, you're going to create a node to hold that product. If it's a product update, you load that node, and then we have a single routine that handles the updating of a node. But at this point in the logic, because we've either loaded the existing node or we've created a product node that's empty, then we can pass either one of them into the update function and it will parse through the fields in the CSV row and affect all the bit twiddling and all that stuff for us nice and handy. And then I already mentioned this once before, make sure that your people using Excel, if they're working on a Macintosh, they need to save it as Windows format CSV. Otherwise, the import routine that comes with PHP will not recognize the output correctly. Okay, so uh, this logic right here, um, given to you in an earlier slide, this will read the CSV file in. And... Uh, count your number of rows so that you know how many imports you're going to be actually handling. Come on. Okay, so now we're loading the files table. So this is going to give us everything in the, in the files table of the, the, the database. This is going to give us all of the taxonomy terms Right here, all of the taxonomy terms associated with that product class. And now, this routine here, it's going to give us the term IDs in the keys and the terms as the values. Uh, but we want to have them in the other direction, so I'm going to call the standard PHP routine flip, um, and this is going to reverse keys to values. And now we're just going to loop over um, all of our different products. We start at row one because row zero is the CSV header. And now we're just going to loop over every one of these puppies. And uh, one of the things that I do, okay, so inside the CSV file, the first field is the node ID. If this is a new node, if this is a new product, then instead of a node ID, it just has the word new. If it is uh, an existing product, then the node ID will actually have the ID to an actual node. 
So this first little if test is just checking to see is this a new node and if it is the following slide is the logic that will create a default Drupal node and then otherwise it's an update and the logic for that is the slide after that one so why won't this go forward come on okay so this is the only logic that you need to create a default product node uh, kind of surprised me that this is all that you needed uh, you just um, whatever your product type is you specify that uh, this is the status uh, meaning that it I forget what status actually re resolves to I guess it is either active or not uh, specify the user ID your name give some default values I you know and these are things that you may want to set on your own I usually set all my formats to PHP because um, every once in a while I do some PHP inside um, the um, node bodies so I just by default set them all to PHP and then here this is the only thing that you really need to say that this is going to be an Ubercart product is you say that this is you know you you give it a sell price value and then this is the routine that is going to do the updating at this point when we pass this node into this routine it's pretty much a Drupal node at this point um, it's not fully validated and all that but we'll get to that at the bottom of this um, import HDR update and HDR is the name of my product class so I, I put it inside the function name okay so uh, this is the other case where we're not creating a new product this is a product that we're updating and so in that case the NID value in my CSV was an actual node ID so I grab that into a local variable do a node load make sure it returned a value a valid value and then I just pass it to my update routine that's pretty much it as far as you know the pre-process handling for an existing node okay and here's that routine that is going to be doing the updating of a single product node and uh, this is fairly straightforward we're just going to be looping over all of the values inside the data array and this data array is your one row from your CSV table which contains all of these fields up here for the information that you're going to be updating to your product so we're just going to be looping over those and in the following slides I handle I, I, I give you the specific logic to do that update and then granted that this logic ran without status being set to non-zero then I check to see if the node ID is set if the node ID is not set then it's a new node so I have to pass it to node submit first once it's been passed to node submit then that handles the pre-processing for a node before it's inserted in, into the database and then node save is what will save that node into your Drupal database and it will handle the calling of any um, contributed modules and their hooks and all that stuff so you'll actually get a fully validated um, Drupal node at that point so the only difference between creating a node from scratch and updating and changing a node is the fact that you call this node submit routine just before node save and uh, I've spent an extensive amount of time going back and forth between using this technique and using uh, Drupal execute I forget what the routine is called but there's there's a, there's another 
technique when you're creating nodes that people advocate uh, called Drupal Execute. And people like that because then it runs the validation uh, logic for any contributed nodes that you're using to modify your products. Well, I'm not using that because in your logic of creating your CSV file, you should be you should include in your process all of the validation. You shouldn't be trying to import into your database node values that are um, illegal. You know, and um, so I've put all of that type of um, error checking, error debugging, field validation inside my CSV, inside my Excel file. So I know that if I'm actually importing a CSV file, the data that I'm importing is already sanitized. So in that case, then I'm just able to use these two routines instead of the uh, more complicated Drupal Execute. Okay, so now in this blue area right here, this is a, a switch statement that's jumping off of each of the keys, and the keys being node ID, type, title. So in these following slides here, these are the cases that, that are being handled inside that switch statement. And so here's where I've got two different um, product types within my class. So I've got high dynamic range 360 degrees, high dynamic range 180 degrees. So they're both basically the same type of product. I just, because they were slightly different, I, I made two different product classes, but they're handling the same. So this just basically makes sure that I'm working with a node of a known type and then just copy across my title. And then for the body, um, you'll notice over here, because the body handling is so simple, I just added it up here. And so all I need to do in order to make the body useful is I replace all tildes with less thans, which undisguises my HTML. And then I replace all carrots with quotes, which undisguises my strings. And so now I've converted a HTML field that was safe to be handled inside Excel into a real HTML uh, data that can be uh, used as the body of my product node. Okay, and here's the import handling for an SKU. And this right here is showing what to expect in this single inside a single CSV field we will always have a default SKU and then depending upon whether or not this was a freshly imported node or this is a node that has more sophisticated multiple options and all this stuff on it there's going to be this product class attribute ID and then a repeating series of data pairs that is either that is the custom SKU and the option ID associated with that and this pair is going to echo for any number of uh, custom SKUs that your product has. So the very first thing we do we output a double quote because this is a complex uh, field or no we're importing this puppy okay so first we trim off the quotes and then, granted that we have something after having trimmed off the quotes, we convert to an array of comma-separated values. We get our default SKU as the first value. And then if we have more than one value, then the second value is our option ID. And then if this is a not a new node, because if this is a new node, we need to create the node before we can give it its optional SKUs and all that. So if this is a new node, 
we're not going to continue into this inner logic. So in that case, if I have a new product and my store staff has given me a CSV file that already has a fairly complicated SKU and sell price and all this stuff, I just run the import twice. The first time it's going to create the node, give it its default SKU, and then the second time it'll catch the fact that this node already exists, and then I can give it its more complex values. So uh, this logic down here is just the necessary logic that is going to uh, update the UC product adjustments table, and then if that fails, this is a, and this is this logic right here is actually taken directly from uh, the Ubercart um, handling of how they do this. So essentially, they do an update, and if the update fails, then they know that this is a new this is a new node, and so then it will insert it. Or if the update fails, they, it knows this is a new adjustment. And so if DB affected rows returns nothing, then we know that this is a new adjustment and we need to insert it. And that's, and this will loop within this case statement, and that's all the handling that you need to be able to, at first level, import your SKU, and then upon su subsequent imports, uh, handle any number of custom SKUs for your product. And here's the fairly similar logic for handling multiple sell prices. Now, this first comment that's in large, this shows the expected format. You're going to have your default price for your product, which is associated with the default SKU and then you'll have your custom price and the option ID that it that associates to. And one thing that you need to make sure that the people, your store staff realize is that these custom prices and option IDs and also uh, over here, uh, the custom SKUs and so on, they're not going to be exported in any expected order. Uh, when you import and export them, Drupal, uh, well, I, I, I guess I could handle adding logic to sort them when I do the export so that they always come out in a nice orderly manner, but right now I'm not doing that. So I've basically uh, prepped my store staff to understand that they have to make sure that they're looking at which option ID this custom price is being associated with. Um, you know, it's very easy for things like that to get mixed up, and then you'll have really ugly prices or prices you don't expect on uh, on a given option. Okay, so very similar to the last thing: strip off our quotes, turn into NRA, count our values, grab our default price. If we have more than one value, verify that this is not a new node, and then loop over our custom prices and set them in the UC product options table. And if that did not work as an update, we know that we're creating a new UC product option, and so we have to insert it. And that's the necessary logic to handle uh, multiple custom prices on a given product. Uh, the image handling is fairly simple. Uh, make sure that the file that you want to um, attach to your node is already being handled by the database. And then if it is, then here's the necessary logic to be able to tell image cache about this file so that, you know, I'm assuming that pretty much everyone would want to be using image cache so that you can have your images at different sizes depending upon where they're being viewed. So this handles all the necessary logic so that uh, this this field gets handled by image cache correctly. If you have more than one image uh, or more than one file, uh, you can just you know loop over this. 
and uh, that's pretty much it for how to handle images. Sure. Um, okay, well, images that are purchased are separate than the, than these images here. Yeah, this is the bulk import, or well, this here would be images, I should get you the right slide. This is images that are being referenced by the node body. Yeah, yeah, this is purely the actual display portion, uh, your um, ad copy. You can call it, you know, and um, the er, earlier in the slideshow uh, is where I pointed out uh, the logic to handle the importing of the actual digital files that would become downloads. Okay. Okay, and here's the handling for um, your taxonomy, and uh, this is actually pleasingly simple. Uh, in order for Drupal to uh, receive taxonomy, in the node is just an array of term IDs. So previously, when we loaded our taxonomy, it was an array of term IDs followed by values. Then we did, an, we did the array flip, which turned it into an array of uh, term strings with their value being the term ID. So in our Excel, because your store staff would never be able to handle setting taxonomy through IDs, uh, they set their taxonomy through the actual term strings. So in this logic right here, I'm receiving an array of terms, and so those terms I can just treat as the keys and then my array I can just assign my IDs just like this and it's all handled for me nice and pretty but the only thing that you want to be very careful with this which has bit me a couple times is you'll get your store staff deciding that oh they want to change one of the terms and they'll you know take a term that has a space in it and turn it into a dash or something like that, which will then, of course, make this fail. So you need to uh, basically be really clear with your store staff that any time that they're changing terms, you need to know about it so that when they do a new export, if they change any terms, you need to do a fresh export so that you have the correct taxonomy terms. What you'll often get is your store staff will be using a previously exported CSV file and continually making modifications to that, which will contain your older terms. And so then new imports won't find the correct term, and then you'll have missing terms in uh, your product tags, which then will make your product catalog not operate correctly. And, okay, so actually we've walked through all the logic necessary to be able to import uh, all of the products of a given class. And it's a little complicated, but it's not actually that bad. It's fairly straightforward. And because you're handling both the export and the import, you have complete control over the whole situation. And it becomes... Uh, this is something that I've, I've noticed just in the practical nature of running an online store. If the store owners have a Drupal installation, they're going to play with it. And they're going to play with it, they're going to do things, they're going to try things, they'll, you know, they may or may not be web developers, but either way, what you've set up is fairly sophisticated and complex because it, it is Ubercart, and it will generally be a little more complex than you want them playing around with. This import-export circular system gives your store owners a toy they can play with. They'll spend all their time sitting there creating really sophisticated 
um, bodies with really nice ad copy and they'll have a separate spreadsheet or a separate area in the Excel spreadsheet where they're pulling in all of uh, their analytics and they've got you know an area where they're logically generating some sort of pricing matrix table and all this stuff and they can really go to town with that stuff which is great because now they're focused on actually their products and the um, analytics to help them sell these products as well as the um, conversion uh, ad copy on the product descriptions which is really what they should be doing instead of screwing around with your Drupal installation so I find with stores that I've created that I have not had an import export system the owners start messing with Drupal versus you give them a nice import export system it gives them a little hamster wheel to run on and it's great because it keeps them off your site and it keeps them focused on the actual products you know just the little practical feedback that I've noticed could be cynical um, some some Excel tips that are very useful uh, never expect your node IDs to hold their values um, store owners will be accidentally deleting nodes they will be deciding that they like one node but they want to they like one product the way it is but they're experimenting with a new one and so they've copied everything over so it's really the same product in the database twice when they get it the way that they like it to look or they're doing something with it then they'll delete the one they don't want anymore and so in general node IDs are your they're the way that you hold on to what a given node is but don't ever expect them to be in any order or to hold their values between any two rinse and repeat cycles and um, another thing that I'm doing is I use the node title to hold on to a products default SKU and then that enables me when I import a freshly exported CSV file I'm able to sort upon the node title which will give me all of my products in a nice order and then in my body tags I have my h1 tag inside the body itself and in my page template I don't output the node title so essentially I'm over using or I'm overloading the node title for my own private purposes but it's a useful place to tuck some data and I know that it will always be there and uh, I think I've already touched upon the fact that um, you need to surround any uh, Excel cell values that have commas inside them with quotes uh, this routine right over here concatenate will become your best friend uh, it's very easy to be able to create pieces and parts of HTML output inside different cells and then using concatenate uh, you are able to just glue them all together so that becomes a very um, manageable way to create you know what could end up being you know a full page of HTML uh, and you want to stick that inside a single cell you'll have you know several dozen rows of additional information that's being supplied by your store staff and then you use that additional information to concatenate all into a nice complex um, HTML body and uh, this substitute function is very useful that's how you replace um, less than characters with a tildes that's how you um, replace some um, quotes with um, other characters uh, I think I use the carrot so this is used to do your um, disguising and here I, I mentioned that right here in the very next bullet and uh, yeah and there are, I already mentioned the fact that marketing and analytical minded store owners will use this Excel import export system uh, it'll be their best friend they just love to run with it 
it's kind of entertaining how much they like it. Okay, second topic is um, creating custom digital download products. I think is one of the more interesting things going on in e-commerce today. Um, and a custom digital download product can be anything from, uh, well, like w w what I'm doing in my store is you can upload a photograph of yourself and then uh, it will be automatically converted into a high resolution 3D model of you, which can then be used to uh, replace actors in filmed media. So the, the idea there is creating a personalized advertising network. And so that's what I've been working on for several years. It's kind of complicated. But uh, using things like, um, you know, something very, fairly simple would be to watermark um, an ebook, you know, or uh, something else would be to um, create a uh, Facebook application. Uh, using um, Drupal for Facebook, it's not too difficult to create a Facebook application, and but it would be really nice if that Facebook application actually had embedded into it uh, the face of your user inside the game characters, or you know the faces of the user and their friends, as well as you know their names and places. But you don't want to be really doing that on the fly constantly because that'll push your CPU load. So you create your assets once that are being referenced by that user and those assets will contain their personal information. So that's some of the things that you may want to do with that and also it's it's very useful for things like creating the virtual economy type stores where somebody purchases uh, your virtual currency and uh, that virtual currency is represented as on digital download assets, okay? So, uh, some things that you will really need in order to pull this off is um, you're going to need to have multiple servers. Uh, you may or may not want to have multiple front ends for your store depending upon how much load you expect your digital content uh, to be generating as far as popularity, but definitely you will need to have multiple back ends that are generating the digital products. For something as simple as um, adding watermarks to like I think like a 20 page PDF, uh, if you use some of the open source available um, watermarking tools that you can find, uh, to watermark a 20 page PDF takes about two minutes, which is just, I can't believe it takes that long. And um, so, of course, if you have a process that's going to take two minutes, that will severely impact any other customers visiting the site at the same time. And if you have any kind of popularity of your site, then multiple customers triggering that logic at the same time will just kill your site. So, um, and also, it's on that same point of wanting to watermark a PDF file, I found that there's um, there's uh, other compiled tools that will do it exponentially faster. And but a lot of these compiled tools, if you're on a shared host or you've got you know some sort of ISP, sometimes they put limitations on software that you can in, that you can, you can install and uh, so um, that's why I like to have my back end under my own control with my own hardware because then you can actually tune that hardware much more significantly and also because the things I'm doing with these custom download products uh, they um, need custom hardware so that's kind of why I'm in, 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 in that position. But in, okay, so in general, uh, the overall process of creating a, a custom digital product is very much like creating a ticketing system, where a ticketing system 
inside Ubercart is when a customer hits the Add to Cart button, that triggers a form to pop up. And then that form contains, you know, username, blah, 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 address, the things that you'd have for a concert ticket, you know, to purchase. But you don't necessarily, you're not doing a concert ticket, you're doing a custom product. But the point is, the actual module is UC node checkout that actually adds, th 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 that adds this logic. And UC node checkout will, you create a custom content type that custom content type has a node creation form and what UC node checkout does it makes it so that when this product is added to a cart it's going to pop the node creation form and then when the user fills that out they submit it now it becomes a node and but the node is waiting at this point because now they've added it to the cart and they've supplied their information but they haven't paid for it yet so now the customer has to go through checkout and when they have supplied their credit card or whatever purchase information necessary I've added a conditional action that is going to be executed when the customer completes checkout. And that conditional action is going to execute some custom PHP code and that custom PHP code is going to verify that the that a product in the cart being purchased has a node checkout ID and that node checkout um, node ID is the node ID of the node containing all of the data that the user just supplied that's supposed to be used in the creation of that product. So this is a little bit um, confusing. You've got your product node and that product node has a add to cart button. When the user clicks that add to cart button that's going to pop a, a form all the user sees is here's a form asking them to supply additional information. They fill that form out and submit it, and now they're back in the store. They go to checkout. Once they've completed their checkout process, then this conditional action is going to trigger. In that conditional action, you have the information of what's the node ID to the form they filled out. Now you have all you have which product they've purchased, you have the custom information the customer supplied, and then at that point you have all the information you need because you know that they've purchased it. You won't get to the conditional action if the credit card transaction was canceled. And so now you call whatever custom product creation logic that you have. And that custom product creation logic can be anything you want. And in my case, it triggers this big, long, complicated neural net cluster. Fuck, what? It works. <laughs> and um, that's pretty much it. It's actually, I was quite surprised once I stripped out all of my proprietary information about how my custom pipeline works, I was able to fit all of the necessary information right onto this one slide. And this... Um, DrupalEasy.com um, event um, registration um, Ubercart node that walks you through all the necessary specific information about creating your uh, custom content type that's going to be the form that the user fills out as well as uh, adding two little uh, fields with CCK uh, to your product node so that you're able to um, find those nodes inside your conditional action. But uh, this post right up here is great. It explains everything in a nice step-by-step -step manner, and it's pretty much everything you need outside of this little overview that I gave. So outside of that,
Uh, anybody have any questions? Anybody want to know anything weird about UberCard? Because I've dug into it a lot. Okay. Um, I brought something similar to your uh, import, mm -hmm. export, but I was having problems with the uh, Drupal ad, I believe it is, or I mean, what was it, Node ad? Mm -hmm. uh, PHP went away. Uh, the uh, script was ex. Oh, what? Overtime was taking over 45 seconds to execute. Mm -hmm. uh, so I put it in a loop. It would process a thousand, then I'd run it again and process the next thousand. Okay. Do you, have you ever? Do you know what's going on? Or? Um, so you're using Node Add instead of Node Submit and Node Save. Uh, I I don't remember. Okay. I, I I assume I just tried to look at the code and I can't get to it. Okay, yeah. Um, and how many products overall are you trying to import? 2,300. 2,300, okay. Um, I'm importing uh, just shy of 1,900. And I believe my imports, they usually finish in about 5 to 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. No, I found that uh, at just over 1,000, it would stop and it would, uh, the browser would error out. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Is it a PHP issue, or are you having write issues with right? Uh, well, it's a, uh, apparently a PHP. I, did, I haven't looked into it tremendously because this approach that I have to match uh, doing a thousand at a time to solve the problem. So I didn't go further into it. It was just a custom module I wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can watch the process list with the MySQL and see if it's stacking up all of this. Right, I, did, I didn't do any of the, database, I mean, any debugging after that, if I could solve it. Oh, minutes. sure, yeah, yeah. you can do that. Mm -hmm. But he's right, it should happen. Yeah. So something was, something was going on, right? Yeah, um, something that I find that, um, you know, you may or may not want to be able, you, you may or not be, may or may not be able to do this, but I've found a couple times where, and I haven't actually had the need to do it here, but I'm doing some fairly complex stuff in, in my store, and I've found places where if uh, logic takes longer than it should, and then I start getting um, aired out times, I'll take that logic, as long as it's n not directly hitting the database, it's just actually doing some sort of computation that I want the answer to, I'll take that computation and I'll make it as a separate C program and just call it with execute, passing the data to it, and then it outputs its output as standard output, which I just grab. Okay, well that's, you know, that's something and I'm actually doing that quite a bit, because, uh, well, as you can imagine, when you're doing this type of um, 3D animation stuff that I'm doing, you can really quickly eat up a ton of CPU. And doing that stuff in PHP is just not the way to do it. trying to get around, uh, I think, if I'm understanding you right, you're, that would take an awfully lot of uh, coding um, to get the node added uh, correct. To get the node where? Uh, added. Uh, no, not actually. Um, uh, let me jump to the right slide. Um, let's see here. I think it was just right over here, right? Come on. I don't know why this is going so slow. Yeah, right here. Okay, in, in this... Where was I? Bulk import of node files right here. Come on. I do not know why my Excel is being so slow. What the hell? 
Sorry. Export, export. Is that it? Okay, here. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so if it's a new node, then you have to call node submit first. And actually, I remember this a little bit. I remember at first I was just calling node save before calling node submit, and it took a lot longer. Okay, so you think node submit is, is the key to this? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, node submit does some handling that prepares a new node to be added to the database and apparently node save has some sort of error checking that um, if it wasn't called then it probably redoes the same thing but in a slower more laborious manner I'm not sure what but I, I, I do remember when I was first authoring this stuff uh, I was only using node save at first and I was getting strange behaviors as well as it was taking longer. And then as soon as I added node submit, it took significant it took significantly less time as well as my strange little errors went away. I wish I had brain to you six months ago. <laughs> I didn't know this six months ago. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other just like in general um, um, Ubercart questions? Do you have a demo of the input expert? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I should have thought of that. Sorry. All right. Interesting. I wonder why there's no mobile access. That's interesting. Here's the site. Do I need to have a hard connection in order to get on the net when I'm at the podium? Hmm? I was. Yeah. Uh, I see this right here is telling me that there's no net connection here. There's no wireless in this spot that I'm located. That's bizarre. It says it sees it. Yeah. Oh, I bet I know what's going on. Okay, connected there. Okay. That's right, we have to wait a minute. Okay, actually, while that's doing whatever it's doing, I think this is already cached. Yeah, okay, so it's a little abstract, but this is a high dynamic range image. This is a 360 degree image that uh, you put inside a sphere. And uh, this is the image that you can actually look at. The actual high dynamic range image 
It's um, deep pixels. It's like 96 pixels per RGB. Or it's 96 bits per RGB. Uh, so what that actually is, it's nine f stops in each pixel. So it contains the entire range of visible light spectrum for each pixel. And so these things are not images that you look at. They're images, it's image data that you wrap onto a sphere and then you use that sphere as a lighting environment inside 3D graphics. And what this does is you can take this lighting environment, put a computer generated object inside that sphere and it will look as if it is from this environment. I can kind of show you an example. Let's see if we're online yet. Oh, and also while I wait for that to load, you can see here, this is the actual product body and in our product bodies inside the Excel I have a lot of additional information which I then plug into other functions that I've written inside VBA that enable me to pull all this information out where I'm given the Latin longitude I figure out what's the nearest landmark to it to give me the um, location and then given the time of year and time of day I'm also able to figure out um, what's the position of the sun at the time that this image was captured, which is all useful information for 3D animators to want to be able to position their digital sun in the same position. But am I... I guess it wants me to wait on the page. I'll show you the import export in just a moment. It's just kind of explaining what HDRs are a little bit. Okay, in this, the car is a digital object, and everything else is just the HDR sphere. There's another example showing the same thing. The shadow that you see passing over the car, it's created by the HDR sphere. Which spots are you talking about? The, uh, the the room room oh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. Let's see here, let's give you another. So you can kind of see how it's, you know, the, the only thing changed in those, in these is the fact that it's a different sphere used to light each of these things. You can kind of see how, what the HDR does in that case, which is, useful for digital animators. And let's look at the import export. Uh, da -da -da. So this is um, the services function browser. 
And so all of these routines that I was just talking to you about, uh, they are plugged into um, services. So I don't need to create any services user interface. So uh, this one right here, set up HDR product files. This is the routine that is going to go through and verify that all of my product files are actually under site control. It's just like a simple little um, um, double check that, that I wrote. And then uh, this right here, I've had a couple situations where I um, did imports with intermediate or buggy logic and I ended up having uh, the same file in the files table multiple times. So this routine here goes through, looks for places where a file is duplicated and just removes that duplicate entry. Fairly simple logic that you'd be able to write on your own once you have done any of this. Uh, this here will export your HDRs and uh, you just, there's no input parameters, you just have to hit call method like this and right here in a moment it will pop okay there we got that this is the CSV file that was just generated saving the file and then over here come on now clean it this way it's my cat Okay, now we're loading Excel. Nope, that's not Excel. It takes longer to load Excel than it does to export the products. Okay, and then of course because the body field contains all this stuff, it gets ugly. So one of the first things I do is select everybody. Fifteen. Okay, so now we've got all these puppies. And now I'm going to sort by my title. Okay, now we have everybody all in nice sorted order. So you can see here's my node IDs, here's all the types. 360s go on for a while, and then it turns into 180s. Now you'll notice that there's 393 different products, but every one of those products has multiple SKUs. As you can see, here's the default SKU followed by uh, option and specific SKU, option number specific SKU, and so on. And then over here, here's all of our cell prices. And so that's the default price and there's you know the options and this is the same value over and over again but in some cases yeah, you can see there's some places where the prices change because uh, the store owner wanted these products to be a little bit different and so then you know there's the image itself that becomes that product browsing image image title and in the image title, I also put um, the um, product taxonomy so that when a user uh, mouses over the image, it'll pop the title plus 
the taxonomy, which is kind of useful. And then also over here, just to give you another idea of what's going on. Here's the same, here's the Excel file that was used to create those files. So I used two different um, sheets. This is the sheet that I build everything with. And you can see over here, here's the fields that were um, output. And then I colored in blue for um, the store owner to be able to see uh, which fields he should be changing. Come on. That's better. And then there's the image title containing the taxonomy. There's the image alt also containing taxonomy. There's the taxonomy itself. And you can see these guys were just created by concatenating the uh, title and the taxonomy fields with a colon between them. And then there's the large body, multiple lined body, but that body is created from all these other fields where I've got a descriptive title. There's more terms for uh, search engine optimization. There's the this was generated from this by a VBA function. And then this here, because it has those little quotes and the little um, degree symbol. Uh, so here I get rid of the quotes with a substitute. Here I get rid of the degree with another substitute. And so this becomes what's used in the actual markup, this field. There's the season or the the day it was taken, the time of day it was taken. I'm still working on uh, the VBA that's going to, given this information, return to me the position of the sun in the sky. Here's the weather that was on that day. And then across here, this is starting the page, starting a table, starting the location markup, longitude markup. You know, so here's all the pieces that I'm using to build what the body's going to be, and those all just get contact, get concatenated huge by my body logic. Here you can see I'm just concatenating all these other fields together to create my large body. And then over here is uh, the price matrix that was used to generate all the different prices based upon camera quality, picture difficulty, utility, blah, blah, blah. And so then once this is all in a state that's really nice and pretty, then all those get concatenated, or all those get copied over here. These are all just references to the other sheet. And then that gets saved as CSV. And then once that's been saved as CSV, I can then come back over here. And first I would import the directory that contains any new files, then I would import the HDR updates, and that is uh, the CSV file. And then here is where I'm working on the same uh, rinse and repeat series for 3D models. And uh, that's pretty much what you need to see there. And uh, I can show you something else that's kind of interesting. Actually, let's look at it over here. Come on. Okay. Here's um, one of my um, digital actor examples. So given this photograph, it created a 3D model of Brad Pitt automatically and then I'm able to animate him. There's just three little frames there showing that. And I think I have some animated examples too. That's right, that'll be over here.
See, so this is actually a guy at DreamWorks who created part of the animation rig. And uh, so here's him animating. And this, by the way, is um, a view slideshow. You can kind of see here's what one of the generated heads look like. And then here's information about the Maya rig with all of the individual animation controls. And then here's my little doohickey that is supposed to tell you what's a good image or not. And then here's an example showing once you when once you hit the add to cart button, it pops this. This product will re requires some additional information. And this is the node type that is being triggered by node checkout. And so you give it a name, give it a file, that's going to be a photo of the person, and then you tell me whether or not it's going to be male or female, give me their eye color, and then you can specify any other notes that you want. And uh, when you say add to cart, it's going to hold on to it when you actually pay for it then it's going to trigger the generation of your digital actor and this store right here is aimed at animators so what you purchase when you buy this thing is you purchase a Maya file that contains everything uh, for that digital actor to then be animated and there's a whole other pipeline that this thing that this thing also plugs into for being able to um, replace an actor in filmed media with one of your digital actors. But that's pretty much it for my talk. If anybody else has any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right. Thanks, everyone. presentation so well, I'd be happy to answer questions well yeah well first of all I want to let me, let me real quickly find how do I turn this thing off do you have a card or anything like that um, I can give you information I may have a card on me okay. where is that there it is canister relay 